probably everyone that's been playing around with electronics for a while has accidentally applied too much voltage to a circuit and blown up a couple of parts. So I wanted to find out, could I design and build a simple over voltage protection circuit, perhaps based around an SCR and a MOSFET, to place between my power supply and my breadboards, or even build right into circuits for over voltage protection. Let's experiment and find out. Before we start the circuit design, let's take a quick look at the SCR specification. I'm going to use the Mac 97A4, not only because I have these available, but also because the specification will meet our requirements. As you can see, there's lots of current and voltage capability with this device, and the one I'm using is a triac, which is really just a kind of bi-directional SCR, and it'll meet our requirements, no problem. This device has a fairly simple pinout just two main terminals in the gate, and we will configure it so that we have a positive voltage on main terminal two, and a positive trigger signal on the gate. And notice that we need a maximum gate trigger current of about five milliamps, and we need a gate trigger voltage in the range of about 0.6 to two volts, and that the holding current will be in the range of 1.5 to 10 milliamps. I plan to use the IRL540N, this is an N-channel MOSFET with logic level gate drive. So if you're going to use something else, you need one with a logic level gate drive. This has a huge voltage range, 100 volts, drain to source. Also resistance RDS, drain to source is very low, 0 0.044 ohms. And huge current capability of 36 amps. I'm using this just for small circuits mainly. If you're going to be using this for anything with heavy current, you'll need to heat sink the transistor. Anyway, more than adequate for our requirements. Okay, so here's our proposed circuit and here's how it will work. In the normal operating condition when we're applying power to our load, this voltage will pass through resistor 1 down through this normally close push button onto this rail to the gate of this transistor. This transistor will be fully turned on and remember that when we looked at the specification we had a very low resistance across the drain to source of this transistor. So for all intents and purposes this point here will be at ground and we'll be applying full power to our load. So far so good. Also because we have a high voltage on this rail, LED will be on, indicating the gray, green condition, everything's functioning fine. And the red LED here will be off because we have approximately five volts at this point. Now, let's say that we have set this potentiometer here so that the SCR will trigger once this voltage reaches 5.3 volts. So at that point, the SCR triggers, and this point here, this rail, is pulled down close to ground. In reality, it's probably going to be around 0.7 or 0.8 volts. But it's low enough that this transistor is turned off. We're no longer applying power to our load. Because this rail is at a low voltage, the green LED goes out, and the uh, red LED comes on. And this SCR will continue conducting until we remove power. Now the way that we set the trigger point for this SCR using the potentiometer is that we would first turn the potentiometer so that the wiper is down at ground level. So there's no way that the SCR is going to turn on. We set our rail voltage to our trigger point. So in this case, I want to use 5.3 volts. So I would set my power supply to 5.3 volts and then slowly turn up the potentiometer until the SCR triggers and the red LED comes on. 
So at that point we should have calibrated it such that it will always trigger at 5.3 volts. We also have a couple of capacitors here. These are just for noise filtering. And I've optimized the values of this circuit for use with 5 volts. You could use it for lower or high voltages. In particular, R1, R3, and R4 are optimized for 5 volts. Uh, so if you're going to be using this for higher voltages, you're going to have to change these values. You're going to have to try by trial and error, error figure out what resistors you should use. Play, pay close attention to the the power rating of this p resistor in particular because it's easy to exceed the power rating of this resistor as you increase the voltage. I'm using a half watt resistor here uh, just in case and I advise you to do so also. And we have this normally closed push button here for resetting the circuit. So remember that once we've triggered the SCR it remains on until we remove power. So we do that by pressing this button to reset the circuit. After of course we've turned down the voltage level and if all is well the circuit should reset. Okay, so that's how it works in theory. Now let's go build it and test it out. Here we can see the circuit functioning normally after we set our power supply to approximately 5 volts and reset it, and then turn up the voltage. We'll see at around 5.2 to 5.3 volts the circuit trips and the red light comes on. And with the over voltage condition, no matter how many times we reset the circuit, it keeps tripping. So it's working properly. An issue I noticed is that the trip point voltage measured on my breadboard by the fluke meter didn't match the voltage on my power supply, and the current wasn't right either. With a 10 ohm load we should have had about half an amp of current. So what's going on here? Well what I discovered is that even at moderately high currents, the resistance of all of the leads and the alligator clips and so on becomes fairly significant, and that's what's causing the issue. Rearranging the circuit slightly goes a long way towards mitigating this. So I moved the voltmeter lead right to the load and also the sense point on the potentiometer. And I was starting to get a much better result. So there you go, you see, now my power supply thinks that the trip point is around 5.2 or 5.3 volts also. So I think the thing to take away from this is that you want to keep your leads and your circuit traces short and it matters where you measure the voltage for the trip point. Okay that's it for now guys I hope you enjoyed this video and learned something from it and if you did please like and subscribe on YouTube and Instructables and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.